Deb, thank you for joining us tonight on Sky News Across Australia. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the latest, but Peter Dutton has backed Pauline Hanson's proposed legal challenge over the Queensland border closures, saying the Premier's lack of logic is killing the state's economy. <laughs> Well, it's great to be on your, on your show, Gleeso. And look, the biggest roadblock uh, to reopening and kickstarting this economy of ours in Queensland is the fact that the Premier is making a shambles of the border closure decision. I mean, Monday of this week, uh, the, the Premier's own roadmap said that the borders were going to open in July. And then she came out with September. Uh, we've got the Federal Medical Chief, uh, Deputy Chief Health Officer, Professor Paul Kelly. Uh, he's saying there's no reason why the borders should be closed. Uh, we've actually done everything we can in Queensland, as Queenslanders, to make sure we're doing the right thing for coronavirus. But for business owners, they are struggling. And Queensland really is uh, built on tourism and relies upon its tourism. Uh, sector. So I feel really sorry for these businesses and I get why Peter Dutton is joining the chorus as well of saying the Premier uh, really has her head stuck in the mud when it comes to this decision. Now, pay, look, Clay, so in relation to the High Court challenge, what I'd like to see is the borders open before this challenge even has to hit the High Court. I mean, we all know that legal challenges take a long, a long period of time and these businesses cannot afford to wait. Mm. I, I just think it's madness. I, I think it's, it's the <laughs> biggest own goal I've seen from this Labor government, and there's been plenty of own goals, as you know, Deb. <laughs> uh, my, concern is, my concern is that July 10 is such a significant period for, for tourism operators in this state because that's the time when uh, you've got the July school holidays, when the snowbirds come up from That's right. uh, down south, from, uh, from Victoria, Tasmania, South Australia, New South Wales. And these people are absolutely doing it tough. We saw that report recently from the Cairns Council. Mm. 7,700 jobs lost in Cairns in the last month. 30,000 on the Gold Coast. Now, my spies on the Gold Coast are telling me that uh, this has gone down like a lead balloon and they're just hoping that sanity prevails and they can actually get back to work by July 10. Oh, look, absolutely. It has gone down like a lead balloon on the Gold Coast. Well, the reason why it has, though, Gleeso, is because the Premier has sent these mixed messages and these confusing, confusing stories um, out there to the tourism operators. She said, get ready for July school holidays, get your staff in order, make sure that, you know, everyone is ready to go for the July school holidays. And that's what the government's own roadmap said. And then on a, on a whim, the Premier changed her mind. Now, this is affecting people from the outback, far north Queensland, as you've just rightly said, Glee. So, look, Cairns was on its knees before coronavirus. Uh, and we know that the Palaszczuk government lost those flights into Cairns, those international flights into Cairns, and they ended up in Brisbane. That was on the Palaszczuk government's watch. Tourism in Queensland was already hurting before coronavirus. And that's exactly why I've been saying we've got to make a decision around the borders and we've got to stick to it. Of course, as long as the health advice prevails. Uh, but we shouldn't be in an all-out war with New South Wales and Victoria. What we should be doing is we should be promoting Queensland as the jewel in the crown that you and I, Gleeso, and your listeners know that it is. And that's exactly why I've been saying that Queensland should be out in front. We should be having a major fighting fund uh, rather than having these, mm. these wars with with New South Wales. I mean, people don't want fights. What they want to see is they want to see their businesses reopen again and they want to see the general public allowed back in uh, to enjoy Queensland as we know and love. Look, we're having a freezing time uh, right now in Queensland, so we can only imagine how cold it is down south. And come July school holidays, that's the time uh, and another thing too, Glee, so we need lead-in time for these businesses so they can get uh, their businesses in order so they're ready to go for those um, yep. tourists when they do start coming back into Queensland. I want to talk about the Paradise Dam very shortly, mm. but I just got a text from the head of TEL in, uh, <clears throat> in, uh, in Townsville. Every, yeah. This is surreal. Uh, Patricia O'Callaghan. Yeah, Every Patricia. day that passes is another day of e economic carnage. Our five regions are clean, 
but we are still shut down. The 250k radius at stage two won't work and lacks understanding of how far regions are from each other. We need to open up and we need to open up now. All right, let's talk about Paradise Dam. 585 page report, it identified major structural issues with that particular dam. What it means is that work will start on Monday to try and repair it, and that's good news because hopefully, you know, you, you, you avoid the prospect of some sort of catastrophic failure. But uh, it also means that irrigators in that particular area are, are going to go without water. I mean, this has just been a complete cluster right from the start. Well, look, I couldn't have said it any better. A complete cluster is exactly what the Paradise Dam decision making from the Palaszczuk government has been. It has created uncertainty within uh, the hort growers and the, the veggie growers and the, the farmers who rely on that water from Paradise Dam. Now, what the Palaszczuk government uh, decided to do was start tearing down the dam. They've got the, the people on the ground right now. And something that your listeners may not know because it's just breaking news is the fact that the Bundaberg fruit and veggie growers uh, have actually put their own hands in their pocket and they have funded a challenge and have lodged an um, injunction wow. against the Palaszczuk government uh, to tear down this wall. Now, the LNP, what the report actually says, Glee, so it does support what the LNP have been saying, there is no need to tear down the, the wall. What we need to do is we need to make sure that the structural certainty of that uh, dam is right. Uh, and if the fruit and veggie growers are that confident in their argument from the reports, uh, then I back them and it is just um, good on them for standing up to the Palaszczuk government. The LNP, the local members, Stephen Bennett and David Batt up there, Cole Boyce, uh, we've all been fighting to save this dam because we know that Labor governments consistently do not back dam projects in Queensland. And Paradise was built by the Beattie government. It is a, a complete shambles. And I think uh, that, the, that the people that built this dam need to be held to account if there is that problem with it. And that's exactly why the LNP have committed to making sure uh, that we maintain the dam wall where it is. Uh, this is really important for the irrigators, for the farmers and for the people of Wide Bay. Now, of course, we're always going to put the safety of Queenslanders first and the people of Bundaberg. But just like COVID, Gleeso, we need to remember it is the well-being, the mental health and the, the health and well-being of these growers of the Bundaberg region who rely upon that hort industry. It is a vital part mm. um, of, of the industry and, oh, sorry, of the economy in Queensland. And we've got to do everything we can to protect it. You know, Gleeso, because I've talked about it on your show before, I want to see dams built in Queensland, not torn down. All right, just quickly, Labor has cancelled another sitting of Parliament in <laughs> August. W why are they cancelling? Well, Gleeso, what the Palaszczuk government is trying to do is they're trying to avoid scrutiny. They're trying to avoid scrutiny over ridiculous decisions uh, such as the Paradise Dam debacle, such as shutting the schools without health advice, such as moving the date for the border closures. But most importantly, Gleeso, they're trying to hide from the integrity issues that has surrounded and completely surrounded the Palaszczuk government in the last couple of weeks. We've got a, a new treasurer, a new deputy premier. We've got integrity issues after integrity issues uh, um, because of Anastasia Palaszczuk showing her weak leadership around the Jackie Trad debacle. We've got to remember, I mean, this, this is really big news. Jackie Trad, the deputy uh, premier of Queensland and treasurer of Queensland, has been stood aside because of integrity scandals that have plagued the Palaszczuk government for over 12 months. The Premier should have acted before now. Uh, what, we, what we know now from the Deputy Premier is that she is facing investigation for corruption charges which may result in seven years in jail. Mm. I mean, this is after the Deputy Premier, Jackie Trad, mm. bought a property, a $700,000 property, uh, that could have benefited from the major uh, infrastructure project. Sure. Yeah, and I mean, you know the litany of, of issues that, that faces the government. So that's why I don't think we're sitting, because I don't think they like the scrutiny. I see she's had a crack at the Morrison government's climate policy. Interesting stuff there from Jackie Trad. Uh, Deb Frecklington, great to see you tonight. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you too, Glee. So good night.